challenges as a result of the domestic debt exchange program. Many people have their monies locked up in fund management companies uh, as a result of the DDEP or perhaps as a result of the banking collapse. For many of them, there's a difficulty in coming out to share their story. But for the few who have mastered the courage, um, it's also a bit of a difficulty because of the uh, potential risk of stigma. Uh, tonight on the program, I'm going to be speaking to one man, very accomplished, um, and he's going to tell you his story. Uh, he has formerly worked with Unilever, worked with Guinness, uh, worked with Accra Breweries, and also ended up uh, working in the media space. Uh, his name is Mr. Echi Kwam, uh, former managing director of the multimedia group. Thank you, Mr. Kwam, for your time, and good to have you on Business Focus. So just to give people a sense of exactly who you are and what you've done over the period, who is Mr. Kwam? What have you done? Yes, good evening. I, I started my career in GB Olivant uh, and then worked in, went on to work at Unilever. Went to Unilever Zimbabwe, came back to Guinness, Ghana, went on to Accra Brewery, and then later uh, came to Joy where I stayed till I retired. So I've been a marketer, sales and marketing. Mm -hmm. I've been my area of expertise. Okay. So that is me. Mm -hmm. Yes. So what have you been doing since you went on retirement? Well, uh, just before I went on retirement, I, 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 I had a medical emergency, uh, so uh, I'm not 100%. Uh, so I didn't go anywhere. I stayed at home, and then when I got to 60, I retired from multimedia. So I've been on retirement. Uh, my health does not allow me to do much, yes. Of course, I'm sure you had uh, a lot of plans after retirement, things you wanted to do. Yes. I wanted to take it easy. Yes. Because I had, I had worked hard, you know, so I wanted to take it easy. And so I put aside something that I was confident would take care of me and my family and, and everything. And it was okay. It was okay. It was okay to, to last you to your lifetime? Yes, I mean, that was the plan, okay, yes. Because you believe in investments? Well, I do, because all, all along, that's what I've been doing. I've been putting money in treasury bills, in uh, investments and all that. Depending on what seems to be good at the time, we would put our money there. Uh, so. It was going to be okay. Mm -hmm. When did things begin to look gloomy for you? <laughs> hey, I would say January 2023. Our investment in Tesla was in 2022, July, and was supposed to mature in 2023. January. And you're talking about short-term investments yeah. in cocoa bills. Cocoa bills. So, come January 2023, before that, we started hearing a few noises. So we called the and asked them, and they said, oh, they, they are not sure there's anything. So we said, we should sell our investment and let us have our money. It was going to be discounted, but we said, and come 2023, January, the money hit the account. So I was very happy. Immediately hit the account, then a debit came. From where? You mean the money hit your account? Yes. And immediately it was debited? Exactly, and was taken out. So I do recall we had done a story then, yes. Mm -hmm. So we were very surprised. So we called Tessa and said, ah, what's going on? And they said, mm -hmm. they don't know, it was government who, or 
Bank of Ghana who made that arrangement. And I said, ah, but you can't take my money. It's my money. You can't just debit it out. When you have paid it in, how can you debit it again? And they said, well, they will try and find out all the things that have happened and let us know. And that was, that was it. 2023 January. Yes. So in, in, in July 2023, they said, oh, we, we, they, 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 something, Bank of Ghana says we should do something, we should re, re, uh, apply or join the, the, the DD. DDEP. And we said, no, we are not interested. They should just give us our money. And it has, it has never come. We've, uh, we've, we've spoken to the governor. The governor says in February, he says, oh, in a few weeks it will be resolved. Then in, in, we did another story. We did a story with Joy. And he said, oh, he was not aware. So he will look at it, and in a few weeks it will be paid. And I've used people who I thought were close and who could tell me something. And all they say is there, there, there really is not anything they can say at this time. So. Have you reached out to Cocoa Board itself? Cocoa Board, we were going to go to Cocoa Board. And the, the MD's uh, uh, personal assistant said that, please, we don't know you. So you cannot come to talk about this. And that was surprising. You don't know me how. And they said, no, our name is not there. So we cannot come there. So that started raising questions. Ah, how don't you know me? I've bought the, your bills and you are saying you don't know me. Ah. So we, 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 we try to find out what that meant. And after a few investigations, we found out that the money we gave to Tessa, I think Tessa accumulated it with other depositors and went to buy into treasury bills, uh, cocoa bills. And so when this thing came, the only name there was Tessa. So Tessa quickly reopened the accounts at another bank and then sent those names, which included us, to them. But I think by that time, it was too late. So, so far as Coco Board knows, they have, we have not bought anything from them. So that's, that's the situation. That's but the situation. You are in all sort of difficulties. You, you, you're battling the health challenge. You're unable to do much. You also have to battle with your investments being locked up at Cocoa Board, at the Bank of Ghana. How are you managing yourself? Mm. I have a small pension. And every month, that is what comes. But one really struggles with the pension to take care of everything. So every month, we, 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 we struggle. We struggle. I have to take care of this house. I have to take care of uh, we pay school fees. Fortunately, now the school fees is over. You have to take care of maintenance. You have to buy food for the house. I mean, I never realized how much we had to spend on food till this thing came. And I had to now start looking at my pennies, look, looking at it and saying, this amount is here, this amount is here. And you are a man who've never lacked in your life. You've worked hard. 
Well, so, well, if you say I mean, so, ah, well, we, we pray to Jehovah because he's the one who looks after all of us. And we ask him to help us. I don't have anybody that I'll say every month I get uh, something from. I don't do, I don't have that. So we, 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 it's not easy. It's not been easy. Yeah. I mean, for a lot of us who started growing up and, and studying uh, business, economics, finance, we, we are mostly told that one of the safest risk-free areas to invest your money is in government bonds and securities. Uh, has that changed? Well, if you ask me, of course, of course it has changed because everything has turned upside down. Everything has turned upside down. If I right now, if you ask me, if I get my money, where am I going to put it? It's going to be very difficult for me. Because you put it in a bank and the bank could, you could say the bank has gone uh, bust. This uh, microfinance and all those things, they, they are all not safe anymore. So right now, that is also an issue. Besides, when we invested the money, the exchange rate was six CDs mm -hmm. to the dollar. Now it's 16. So that's a huge difference. Who's going to pay for it? Who's going to pay for it? Because if the money had been out, I could have been moving it where I think I can get some money here and there and all that. But I don't have it. I don't think it's being invested. So what, what do we do? You're still watching Business Focus, um, a weekly business and economic analysis program. Uh, if you just joined us, I am speaking to Mr. Echikwam. Uh, he's a former managing director of the multimedia group. He worked at Joy FM. Um, he also once worked at Guinness. He worked at Accra Breweries. Um, he's a man who's, who's worked hard, you know, made a lot of investments. Today, unfortunately, he appears to be struggling because of government's domestic debt exchange program. He decided, through no fault of his, to invest in cocoa bills. And these are short-term investment instruments uh, in cocoa board. Uh, since 2023, he's not had any money come in. Mr. Kwam, I mean, you are not in the best of condition. You've got to cater for a family. You've got medical bills to pay. How do you do that? Mm. Currently, uh, as part of my retirement package, Joy is looking after my medical bills till next year, five years. So to a large extent, I can say that my medicals are taken care of. So that is a relief. Uh, uh, but otherwise, you know, and when I think about it now, I should have taken a medical insurance for, for the family. If I had done that, like we will be taken care of now. As it is now, Joy is taking care of my medical bills. Until so, next year? Yes. And, and then you've got to figure a way out? Yes. Have you, I mean, for you, why, why, why do we find ourselves in this situation? I, I don't get involved in politics, mm. yes. So uh, I, I will not answer that. Mm. Mm -hmm. But I think that everybody knows. Who, if, who, if you live in this country, you know what has been going on. Mm -hmm. So that is all I'm prepared to say about right. that. If any investor walked up to you tomorrow and said he had funds and wanted to invest in government securities or government, you know, treasury bills, would you advise him? Uh, based on my experience, how can I advise him?
if I was to say, oh, yes, it's good. And he heard that I'm going through this thing. And yet I'm recommending these bills for him. You say I'm not an honest person. So no, I, I, I just, I wouldn't recommend. Based on my experience, I would not recommend. How far have you gone in trying to recover your monies? Have you tried to seek audience with the governor of the Bank of Ghana? Have you called friends? We've tried everything that is possible. We've tried everything. Gotten people who are close to the governor to talk to him. Gotten people who are close to the former finance minister to talk to him. I mean, we are, we've tried everything. But nothing has come out. See, nothing has come out. So, Have you had to sell any assets of yours? Oh, we sold a car or two. I mean, for people who know you like myself, I mean, I've always known you to be a man of class, of taste. You drive some of the best cars I've known. <laughs> I mean, how am I to believe that you are not exaggerating this, your situation? Oh, oh, I'm not. I'm not. One, as you are going older, you don't need the movement. I don't, these days, I don't really go out. What's the worst that could happen? I don't think about that. I don't, I don't think about that. And I continue to pray and put my faith in, in Jehovah. So, if the worst should come, we will cross that bridge. Does it sometimes cross your mind that possibly you have wronged somebody for which reason? Bad thing happened to anybody. But with your level in society, with the work you've done, with the influence you've built over the years, you should mm -hmm. be going through this. Even if you did, it should be resolved as soon as possible. I think... Yes, I mean, I would want to say I don't deserve to go through this, I've worked hard, all that. But the thing is that it has happened. It has happened. And I don't see the way forward. I you don't, don't see the way forward? I don't. Because the people you are supposed to see, the, the governor and the finance minister, I've seen them. Oh, I've had people see them, and there's, there's nothing happening. Tessa tells us that they are working on it, they are working on it, they are working on it. So what else can I do? In my preamble to this interview, and as we wrap up, I, I talked about the fact that there are still a lot more people who are reeling from the effect of the DDEP. In fact, I've had calls from a lot of accomplished people who are going through difficulties as a result of their euro bonds or cocoa bills being affected. And for most of them, there's a difficulty in coming out to tell their story. For someone like you, I mean, I can imagine that even to decide to come out the first time, it had to take a lot of pain to speak about this. Yeah, I mean, it's part of doing what you can. Because if I sit and keep quiet, it will not change anything. If I talk, perhaps it will affect one or two people who can do something about it. So it's all part of Doing what you can. Doing what you can. So that if anything will happen, it will happen. 
how do you ensure that this doesn't affect your health any further? I, I, I can't give you an answer for that. Because as for the body, when something happens to it, you can't really do much about it. I, I try to do my exercise, try to eat the right foods and all that. That is what I can do. Given the opportunity to you to speak directly to the people who matter, who have to take the decision, that through no fault of yours, you've had to suffer. All you did as an individual was to work hard and to invest your money in the government. Uh, uh, to those of you who are in a position to help us, we haven't done anything wrong. We honestly thought we were investing in the right place. If it turns out that we did not do the right thing, if it turns out, by investing in a company that was not transparent with us, I think that you should have some sense of compassion and do the right thing. I'm not talking just for myself. I'm talking for others who have found themselves in the same position. Please try and do something about it because as you know, from six dollars, six CDs to the dollar, to 16 CDs to the dollar, the money is, is, is gone. So please, you have to do something to help us. And that is what I have to say. All right, Mr. Kwam, thank you very much for your time. Thank you yeah. for coming. All right, so Mr. Chikwam is a former managing director of uh, the multimedia group, uh, Joy FM. He also worked at Guinness and a number of other multinational companies. And you heard it all, speaking about his battles with uh, Coco Bills, he invested in about two years ago, and all the challenges that have come with it. My name is Parkwis Yasari. There's more of this uh, interview on our Facebook page, uh, also on DSTV channel 279.